News in the world of ASCA, let's go. A major update for ASCA is coming on Monday, October 14th, and Sad Snail from Sand Sailor Studios, try saying that three times fast, has given us some sneak peeks into what we can expect. Let's watch it together and I'll give you my thoughts. Hey Vikings, I'm Stefan, aka Sad Snail. Uh, here we are with our very first update diary. Our next update is called Farmers and Fighters, coming October 14th. In this update, you will be able to form your very own town guard, known as a militia. Members of the militia are regular villagers enlisted to be your first responders in case of an attack. To rally your militia, you'll have to craft a new item, the horn. The horn can be used in uh, two ways. It has a primary use, which will alert the entire village, so has a secondary use, which will rally the militia to a specific point. So this idea of a militia is a really good idea because it has been such a challenge to try and get villagers to come and help during a raid. And obviously this is going to get people up from being awake. I mean, the winter raid you can kind of plan for and have a schedule set to keep them awake, which is what I do. You can check out my video on schedules to get tips for that kind of thing. But the unexpected raids that just happen, you know, you don't have time in the way that the UI works to quickly call everybody to come and defend against a raid. So unless they happen to be doing their route that you've set for them and guarding the village, near where the raid is happening, then they're probably not going to be a lot of help. So it looks like the player themselves probably is the one that blows the horn. It would be nice if we could have one of our villagers assigned as a lookout up here to be the one to the alert, alert the village. I don't know if that's a possibility. It says the primary use is for the entire village, so that'll wake everybody up, get everybody ready to go. But then the secondary use for rallying them to a specific point, I think is particularly interesting too, because Sad Snail had mentioned during a live stream that this horn is mainly designed to be defensive in nature to defend your village but there would be a way to potentially try and use it for winter invasions and so i'm thinking that maybe this rally to a specific point is the way that we'll do that like we can put markers down for our militia near the portal if we find it before the winter rain and rally the militia there maybe it'll be more efficient than the way we're currently having to do it we're also adding three new levels to the eye of odin the more upgraded the Eye of Odin is, the more militia your village can sustain. So that's an interesting way of doing it, that you can upgrade the Eye of Odin to get more militia. I like that. I would wonder if over time we can have more benefits to an upgraded Eye of Odin as well. And notice that as they upgrade this Eye of Odin, it's bigger than the one we had before. So it's going to take up more space. I don't know if that's going to be accounted for in current worlds and you have things around it. My guess is probably not. So you may have to move things that are around it. And probably with each level, it gets bigger and bigger. So that'll be one of the things that I'm checking first off in my live stream on Monday when the update comes out. I'm also going to be giving away some keys for Aska, if you want to check out the game, thanks to Sand Sailor for providing those for my community. So make sure to join me for the live stream, checking out the update on Monday. We'll see a picture later too in this video where there's a huge circle around the Eye of Odin. If that's an upgrade, we'll definitely have to account for that in our village planning. But let's keep going. But enough about fighters, let's talk about farmers as you will now be able to set up a seasonal crop schedule. Yay! The days of manually setting crops season by seasons are over as you're now able to set seasonal tasks for each crop field. This is something that's been highly requested because it's just kind of a pain and you end up losing resources. And if the village is about automation, then this should be automated too. So I'm glad that they're adding that in. Definitely a positive there. Moving on, caves are also getting a rework as we've added the ability to place wall torches. Gone are the days of stumbling in the dark as your miners now have the ability to light caves as they dig through them. Wall torches is a genius move, especially if you're just running over to check on how things are going in there. You have to run and get a torch every time. If they have them up on the walls, you don't got to worry about that. Notice too on this person in checking out the cave wall, it looks like 
she has the horn on her. So I wonder if you can just carry it around as well as it looked like it was attached to a structure over here in the beginning. Are there two options? That's interesting. And since we're on the topic, we've also added extra iron deposits separate from the cables. The cave so we definitely need more iron in the game. This may potentially be an issue for you getting this in an existing world though. Each island has three caves. If you have gone into all three caves, then you won't be getting the updated cave system there. You'll have to start a new world to get the cave system. Now, on my current world that I'm recording from, I have put the door in the third cave, but I haven't gone in. So it'll be curious to see whether in that situation we can actually get the new iron. I hope so. But I'll also be starting another world too to go through all of the updates with a fresh look. The caves are becoming richer, but they're also becoming more dangerous as we've updated the uh, big polar fight. It's now a proper boss fight, so be wary. If you manage to defeat the boss, you also clear the mine of baddies. So this is awesome. It looks like it's still basically the same type of crawler, but bigger and meaner. The current so-called boss fight in there really was not a boss fight. It was not hard to get rid of it at all. And I like the idea that once the boss is gone, the baddies are gone, you're not going to just have to keep fighting them over and over as they come back, scaring the villagers out. So maybe this will add another level of danger and difficulty in combat, because some people are saying the combat is not so challenging, although a lot of people are fine with that. What do you think? I haven't really gotten enough feedback on the combat to know where most people stand on whether they think it's too easy, good enough, too hard. But enough about work and warfare, let's talk about fashion. We're adding in a host of new hairstyles and tattoos for both Asuka and Ragnar, uh, and you'll be able to unlock them through a whole new tier of god deeds. So they added this in pretty early, like some games that takes them quite a while to add this kind of stuff in if they're going to add a beauty pit or like the vanity that Valheim added in. Although I guess maybe they did it more quickly because they had so few options at the beginning of the game in limiting what your character can look like. So it's a nice touch. So then he talks about how they're also going to be adding in Steam Cloud saves now for an easier way to back your game up, your progress. And also included in this update are going to be a lot of bug fixes and optimizations and such, which we don't have all the details on yet. But look at this one image that they show right here. This Eye of Odin is in the midst of a huge stone circle. Is this just an Eye of Odin that's been placed in the middle of a ruin? Or do you think an upgraded Eye of Odin is going to be that big? Because if so, that's going to make some huge changes in how you plan out your village. But it doesn't have as much of the upgraded base right there. So maybe they just set this in the middle of a ruin. One of the fixes that I've specifically asked for... Adi to San. Um, is that we'd be able to open gates with the cart while we're walking through instead of having to put it down to open a gate. To me, that is um, such an annoyance, especially if you're going through double gates. And they said that they used to have that, but they took it out because there was an issue with the programming and it was causing some stuff to glitch out. They're hoping to get it working again. I don't know if they're going to have it done in time for this update or not. And of course, they're grateful to the community for all of our input and want to keep working on the game to make it better for us. I'm looking forward to the update. Join me on Monday. See if you like what they've done with the update and maybe win a key for yourself or a friend. Until next time, happy gaming.